Hey kids, it's been a trying week. I learned that there's actually good pronouns and evil pronouns. And I also learned the hard way, the difference between a liberal and a leftist extremist radical. This is United A-Holes, a video cast discussing cultural topics with no filter. So, pronouns. Before we start, I'm going to read you something that was destined to be in print media, but sadly didn't make it due to somebody's outside opinion. This is a movie review of the movie The Hate You Give. For those that do not know, the movie Hate You Give deals about a inner city police shooting of a young African male. The Hate You Give. Ever since I've been a movie fan, there are a few things that I know about film. And one of them is that when an actor, actress is young and in the early stages of their career, it is during this time period that they do their best work. That is before the soul-crushing weight of the industry discards them. After all, not every child actor gets to follow in the footsteps of a Jodie Foster or Christian Bale. That being said, after watching the movie The Hate You Give, Amanda Stenberg could be another exception to this rule. After all, there aren't too many 19-year-olds that have graced the cover of Time magazine. And she did. And the movie review goes on to list some of her acting credits and the fact that she had two reoccurring roles in two uh, television series that were canceled after the first year. Uh, Noted that it's the uh, theatrical cinema's uh, gain because of that. The movie goes on to um, give a shout out to Russell Hornsby. Uh, who turns in a understated but beautiful performance as our heroine's father in the movie. With the subject matter of a police shooting involving an unarmed African-American inner city youth, there are plenty of moments in this film that would lend itself to overacting, and this doesn't happen on any level, which is another reason why the film is rated at 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. This movie shows that when we ignore color, we don't see a person's experience. And if we cannot see their experience, we fail to truly have an understanding of who they are as human beings. But don't take my word for it. Come out and see this film. This review was sent out to two different people. The next morning, One of the people that saw this gave it a thumbs up, if you will. The other person didn't comment on it. Until later on in the day, they wanted to discuss it before it actually went into print media as to the offensiveness of it. So, having said that, I went over and uh, took the time out of my day and met with this person to discuss my movie review. The first thing that was brought to my attention was my depiction of Russell Hornsby in the article. The line says turns in an understated but brilliant performance as our heroine's father in the movie. Now, when I wrote that as our heroine's father, I wrote that as in the movie going public, watching this movie and enjoying it. The person on the left of me, the person on the right of me, and all around me. But I was informed that because I used the word our, and the character in the movie is black, that that implies ownership, 
which implies slavery, which implies racism, to which I was dumbfounded. The second thing that they took offense to was the line, when we see, when we don't see color, we fail to grasp the experience of a person. I'm paraphrasing. That is an actual line from the movie, which, by the way, the author of the book is an African-American woman, but there was an issue with that um, because that was labeled racist, even though it is taken word for word in the movie. And I will say that the person that is critiquing uh, my work did not actually see the film at all. The whole experience um, left me um, at a loss for words, really, because in my opinion, if racism is implied, it means that you thought that that was the intention of the person actually writing the words. For, and that's when I, I actually learned the true difference between a liberal and a leftist radical, if you will, because I showed this to two people. One of them liked it, and the other one had the opposite view. And so, through discussions with my editor, we decided that we weren't going to publish this. And I was still dumbfounded at the fact that this um, even required a conversation. And I thought that it would be best if nothing went into the into print. And so it was left at that. Now, there have been a few people that have known, uh, knew this story, who have come out and said, I don't think that it has to be said that you're not a racist. Well, I'll give you an example. I could look to Randy, who has three children, and tell him that, Randy, I think that you're a good father. But here, take these books on fatherhood and how to actually parent with you when you go home this evening. Because I was sent an article. That's a bitch slap. I know where he was going. On that's, racism. That's good stuff. Yeah, I like you, but also fuck yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it wasn't implied that that's how they really felt what I was doing, then why send me an article on racism and the black experience? Can I clarify something real quick? Go ahead. Was the person giving you this information African-American? No. Or Canadian. So what the fuck do they know about the black experience? Yeah. Well, they read that article, Brent. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, well, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> And so I did read the article, and there was nothing in there that I actually didn't already know. Um, the article that they sent you? The article about that racism. they sent me about racism. Everything well, in yeah, there. Yeah, being I racist, didn't. you knew all that already. Well, yeah. <laughs> you were responsible for a lot of that stuff. Hey, I gotta jump in. We have to but, mention that there's a new asshole here. Yeah. So if you've been following along, there's, there's a new asshole. You wanna introduce yourself? Uh, I'm the new asshole. There you go. No, I'm a new asshole. <laughs> we didn't do a get to know this asshole, but we will some point. It will happen. Yeah. Sure. Josh. So, sorry. <laughs> so that article never hit print. Never. So you're not never. contractually obligated to not place it in any results? No. So you could no. post it as a comment I to would, this video. I would 
so yes. that other people can read it. Yeah. Boom. I could do that. Yeah, she fucking could. But here's the kicker. I actually thanked the person who's a friend of mine, believe it or not. Yeah, can't have any friends, that's hard to believe. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a rough one. For sending me the actual article. No, 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 what we're saying is your article. Right. We right. think you should publish that as a comment on this yeah. video or in the, the description below. So or people, let, the or article let, question let people read was, it and yeah. make their own they minds can make up as to, what, on to whether what they you're think. racist or not based on that article. Yeah. Because we might be surprised, we might get a whole bunch of comments. Well, I'd be surprised we get a whole bunch of comments, period. But uh, <laughs> we might get a bunch of comments that go, yeah, fuck yeah, this is racist as hell. I'm completely derailing your conversation, but I did get confirmation today that we have a second lady that watched the videos. Sweet. I know. So now I can't use that joke anymore, gentlemen and lady. I actually have to say ladies. Well, now. you used that like how many episodes ago? I know. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Ken. <laughs> the, but it gets better. Oh, the story has an extension. When we were talking about my review, one of the things that was brought up was that this did not reflect the organization that this was for. Even though it wasn't for them, I was contracted to actually do it for my editor. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just so happens that this event this movie tied in with uh, uh, another organization. Well, the right. event was the one bringing in the movie yes. that you were reviewing. Right. Yeah, but you, but you were, reviewed you it were on reviewing your own before right. the event. Yeah. Yes. Well, the movie the, the movie. It's, yeah. They don't own the movie. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's kind of like me complaining about the pizza that was delivered and the guy that drives a taxi being upset with me for being upset about the pizza. It right. has nothing to do with him. He just delivered it to me. Right. Exactly. So... One of the things that I pointed out to her was that I had sent it because she, um, the person said to me, if it goes in the paper, I want a disclaimer that it doesn't reflect the views of us. And so that's when I said, well, I sent it to more than just you. And I got positive feedback from somebody else in your organization. To which it was met with disdain. And regardless, we set our peace to each other. And left on friendly terms. I thought that was the end of it. On Sunday... I had to deal with this all over again, only on another level, because I got a message from the person that read it and liked it that said, I did not read your article. I did not tell you that I liked your article. I only saw it when the person who disliked it sent it to me. And I thought, wait a second, what is going on here now? This is a whole different uh, ball of wax now because you've got now somebody still stewing and upset over my words, but now my credibility now I believe is now coming into play. So I didn't let it go. I picked up the phone and I made a phone call and I basically took issue with the, how can you say this? Well, I never read it. Well, let's go back through our chat history on Facebook and I got, oh my I almost swore there. I apologize. I am so embarrassed. I am so sorry. You sent it to me. I read the last three lines, saw that you gave it a favorable review. I've always liked your work and been a fan of your writing. That's why I gave you the thumbs up. I actually didn't read the whole article. I have to get off the phone with you right now 
and I have to take care of a couple things. So, okay, what's he got to take care of? And then my mind starts wondering, what is going on behind the scenes yeah. that I don't know about? Yeah. You, that's you, where it paranoia gets, kicks in. That's where, but that's where it gets scary because then I get a message that says, this is what I've sent out. And again, it goes right to my credibility. And I never thought that I would have to have somebody defend me, but... That's what they had to do. They had to, and the line is, no, can, did, not, lie. Yes. It is 100% my fault. I am embarrassed over the situation. And he explained, as I just explained to you, that, you know, he didn't read the whole thing. He just, you know, basically saw that I liked the movie and thought, great, that'll get more people into the theater to watch this thing for our event. Great. No biggie. But throughout the day, I'm hearing and seeing stuff, and it's like, what is actually going on? Because, you know, there's more, there's more stuff going on in my defense from people than really should over this by now. So I'm thinking, you know, is there is there really that much of an axe to grind over this? You know, over me personally? It's people that know you coming to your defense. Yeah. Which, which, which isn't a bad thing. But and my, may... I guess my point is, <clears throat> why would they even have to? At this stage, you know what I mean? Because when you... He, I had this happen to me recently. Somebody was complaining about someone that I knew. And I said, hey, give them a break. They've had a rough, they've had a rough year. It was somebody being a little bit picky. Um, so you, you do that for people. But if there's more people involved and then another person gets involved that knows you and said, oh, that's not Ken. That's not. It, it's people coming to your defense. I don't, I don't know that I would read too much into the backstory of this. I don't know how much more. There's conversations going on you're not privy to, but I think that what what you're seeing from what you're telling me is you're seeing people saying, well, that's not true. No, that's not true. That's not the way. Ken. Ken's not a liar. Ken's not this. Ken's not that. It's people that know you that feel the need to say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak up for this person because I know that that's what's being said is incorrect. Even if it was just a, a misunderstanding of reading the words, okay, you, you've got to miss, you, you don't understand. This isn't what he means. I know this is what you think it means, but it doesn't. So I think it's, I think it, I would see that as a good thing. But it's not only that. It's also, Ken is a good guy. Ken meant no harm with his article. Ken, Ken was only trying to do good with his movie review. He didn't mean to cause any harm, you know, right. and it's like, right. are you still still, you know, on the soapbox saying that, you know, racism needs to be stamped out and and I need to be. Absolutely. That person that gave you the original review took your article to the extreme. And I really hope you post the article so that everybody can read it, make up their own mind. Could, I haven't read it yet myself, obviously, but I've believe you when you say that you wrote that with clean intentions and everything you've read so far did not sound racist to me but the original person that saw the racist in it went and found it yeah and they did that with you they're doing that with everybody else so well, they made those statements to somebody else the person that you sent the article to that gave you the thumbs up and they're probably saying i can't believe you told ken that that was good blah 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 blah, blah. and they started defending themselves whoa i didn't even read that article and that's what, well, Ken said you did. Well, I didn't, right? And now Ken's a liar, right? And that's why he called you and says, you know, what's going on here? You Lying, read back racist. to Facebook. <laughs> read back to Facebook. He goes, oh, my God, right? So he corrected his statement back to the original person, said, he's not a liar. I did say this. Big misunderstanding. I, I think that person handled it fine. Yeah. From what, what I understand, I think they did the right thing, like, for themselves, at least. Well, yeah, there's miscommunication, and they cleared it up. Yeah, and I guess I'll make the point. A thumb, and I'm not trying to shoot you down, man, at all. But someone going very good thumbs up on something doesn't mean they necessarily... I've caught people numerous times in my life with numerous adventures I've been involved in. 
of sending someone something and saying, check this out, and they come back, sounds great, or it looks great, or it's awesome. And then when you actually push them on the issue, they didn't actually consume it yeah. all. They might have gave it 30 seconds as yeah. opposed to the full five minutes I, it required. I've True. done it. Yeah. So, so I've done it. I mean, people, too. Have, people have sent me stuff, and I haven't really put Because it's easier, it's the easier to dissuade it with it's, a positive it's, comment. It's easier to, you know, I'm being supportive. Yep. But not really. Like, yeah, yeah, because you're, you're not being support. honest. Yeah. But the thing that bothers me the most is that the person that basically, and I don't want to use the word attack, took issue with me, knows nothing about me. Nothing at all. That would be part of the root of the problem. And getting back to what <clears throat> Brian said, they went looking for racism or looking for division. And I say to that, if you wake up every morning looking for division, how are you ever going to be able to see something coming together? Yeah. If you believe that's their goal, then they're never going to make it. But I don't believe that's their goal. Okay, so I'm going to ask one question, just because of my ignorance of not seeing the movie either. Is the movie spun from a racist, some kind of political statement or, or social statement on racism? I, Based on the, the content, I'm guessing it has the, that. The, the movie is very honest, very raw, and very emotional. However, it doesn't really go through the overacting tropes, you know what I mean? No, no, but is it is there an overtone? But there is an overtone of race, yes. I, I think it would be hard to make a film without having... Exactly. Like, even but there is a not... line in it that's from the main character, and again, this was written by an African-American woman that said, if you don't see me as color, if you don't see my color, then you don't see me as a person. If you don't see me as a person, you don't, you, you, you fail to, that's actually in the movie. I don't know that. Because she has a white I, boyfriend, okay? For those yeah. of you who don't know, she has a white boyfriend in the movie, and she's an African American school, you know, teenager or whatever. And he says, I don't see in the movie, I don't see you as being, you know, having color. And she goes, Well, if you don't see me having color, then you don't see me. And if you don't see me, you don't see my experience. That is directly in the, from the movie. And again, written by an African-American woman. So, you know, but again, getting back to the, you know, this person doesn't really know me, doesn't, you know. And again, if, if you think the racism is implied, then, then that means you truly believe that, you know, I was purposely trying to be racist. This is based on some of the things that I have saw in my defense. Right. You know, and I, and I have one thing to, to say to them, having grown up in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, I'm going to read something. This is an obituary from Hubert Garnett Grant also known as Huey. Hubert Garner Grant, age 76, after several years of battling Alzheimer's, complicated by respiratory issues, passed away suddenly and peacefully at Northwood Manor in Halifax, August 29th, 2014. Huey was a prominent and well-known entrepreneur, both in Halifax. He established many clubs, grocery stores, at a landscaping business at one time. He was just an all around great guy. He was at one time a huge football fanatic and he used to play for the Buccaneers. He broke many records in his local sports hall of fame. He was a man of integrity and loyalty, which made him many a friend to everyone, regardless of their race, age, or walk of life. It was a loss for our community. I say our community because there was a time when this man was my next door neighbor. And I'll just leave you with that.